Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm Matt Silver from Experience Christian Church in Exton. When I say congratulations, you're out of here, how do you feel? The excitement on your face is completely overwhelming. It feels fantastic. Well, some of you, I'm sure you are excited for what's next. Some of you, you may feel a little apprehensive, like, am I really ready to leave this nest? But as we embark on something new, very seldomly is it one or the other, it's kind of like my daughter's kiwi yogurt. It's just mixed up a whole lot with a lot of toppings, right? You feel that in your, in your gut right now? Well, that's what we're here to do to say is to let's say launch you off and launch you well. The passage I want to refer to this morning was given to a man named Joshua, and he was about to do something bold. He was setting off on something new. And in four short, short verses, he was given four words three times, to be strong and courageous. You don't say these words to someone getting ready to go to a pool party. A lot of you are going on a pool party today, I'm sure. You don't say those words to someone getting ready to go on vacation. You tell them when they're setting off to do something important, something meaningful, something that could be scary. And so, like Joshua, you're about to do those things. Joshua did have a little bit of different circumstances. He was going off, he was a little older than you guys, and he was also about to lead two million people into an unknown territory. But like you, he felt different emotions. Like you, he wanted to succeed. And like you, what he did really mattered. So like Joshua, hear these words that were shared to him. Those words were, be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you'll be successful in everything you do. Study the book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So although your adventure may be a little different, those same three principles that I'll mention to you now, you'll use over and over as you set off in life. The first thing that Joshua did is he accepted the fact that God had something for him to do. The book of Ephesians is clear. You are God's masterpiece, and you have a mission. Look at someone and say, you have a mission. Like you can tell one another, you have a mission. <laughs> it was only supposed to be five minutes, but it might go ten if they don't say, you have a mission. because You have a mission. Be excited about that. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I got a chance to walk around the graduation, or the, the eighth grade projects. How many of you got a chance to see the projects? They were certainly impressive, weren't they? Ryan, you were turning plastics into bricks. Izzy, taking on poverty in Philadelphia. And Jack, you were cleaning up outer space. Like, those are amazing <laughs> projects that you had, unique on your personality, using your passions. You have things to do. You have a mission. The second thing is Joshua had been prepared for his next assignment. Joshua had been trained by Moses. He knew God's instructions and he studied God's word, which allowed it to shape his character. When I walked around that evening and said, what do you love about this school? You unanimously said, we love the community. We really care about one another. We like the teachers, that they invest in us. We got to do special things here, go on special trips and projects. And so because of your experiences here, you know you've been prepared for what's next. You can be strong and courageous as you sat in chapels hearing God's word knowing that you can apply those principles as you move forward. And lastly, Joshua knew that as he moved to the next challenge, God would be with him. There was a confidence. When he said be strong and courageous, he said do not be afraid or discouraged. There are times you will be afraid, and there are times you will be discouraged. But you can be strong and courageous because God wants to be with you wherever you go. I pray for you now. Father God, thank you for the chance to gather here in this room where they've been subject to instruction. They've received your word, and God, they've been challenged to go out and live those principles. 
So God, as they set off to their next adventure, regardless of how excited or how nervous they may be, let them know it's your promise to be with them that can carry them through anything that they have next. God, today is, of course, a mixture of excitement. So God, let them remember these moments that will carry them on to new and more exciting things as they continue to navigate life. Thank you for the ability to come here today and to see such a cloud of witnesses that are eager to cheer them on and walk with them in the next phase. We love you, God, and we're thankful for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. On behalf of the Montgomery School Board of Trustees and our faculty and staff, I welcome you to graduation for the class of 2023. Uh, I want to thank Pastor Matt. Each year we ask a member of uh, a religious community to come uh, who has a connection to someone in the class. I want to thank the Ruggieri family for connecting us. Um, we are a family of many faiths and beliefs here at school. This year, we embraced a school-wide theme of imagine. We chose the theme because it permeates everything that we do in education. Student questions and dreams always drive the best outcomes. But on a deeper level, there's also the imagining that adults do on behalf of kids. Imagining and preparing for their future. And in this audience, we have so many parents, grandparents, teachers, friends, and other honored guests. You all, in one way or another, imagined this day and this opportunity for these students. You matter more in their journey than you can possibly comprehend. You imagined their path and gave them the best support so they could in turn imagine this best version of themselves. Graduations are over in a flash. The specific gathering and duty that we all have to make this a special one, it happens only once. It's happening only now and only with you. Students, does it feel like you imagined it would? Okay. Good, good. When you look at, at these caring faces who came here just for you, is that what you imagined? In those faces, there's a deep imagination, both for you today and in the future. They have your back. Can you take a moment from your chairs and just let them know in whatever way you want to that they mean something special to you in return. <laughs> a smile says a million words. In my official role as head of school, I am joined here by Chair of the Board of Trustees, Ms. Maureen Rukin, as well as other board members here to mark their duty to confer diplomas. We, the board and I, acknowledge with immense gratitude the work of the faculty who brought these students and all in their care in this, to this moment in time. They're our school's chief imaginers. Can we all please take a moment to acknowledge the hard work, sacrifice, and deep loving commitment of everyone who works with our children? We owe them so much. Now, for something completely different. I want to break with the usual script this morning um, just a little bit because something has happened that we could not imagine. No, it's not the air. The air is getting better. We actually have one family here today that is getting pulled in two very important directions this morning. The Frizz family is about to have two Montgomery graduates in their family when Gabriella receives her diploma. However, their other Monty graduate, Grace, class of 2019, is also getting her high school diploma this morning. We want the family to experience both. So, in the spirit of our community and sharing this moment, we're going to do this part a little out of order for Gav. We will award one diploma now. Stay calm, everyone else. <laughs> and then we will allow the Frizz fan club to take their show on the road. So, I will read a few things about the graduate, and then she will receive her diploma. 
from the middle school head, Mr. Vandergrift, and from our board chair, Ms. Rupin. Are you ready? Gabriella Frizz. Gabriella came to Montgomery in first grade. Her friends know her as jovial, very funny, and a very good friend. Strong-willed, has a great voice, very talented, willing to try anything. Just have to get this delivery right. She is so funny and nice and always there for me. <laughs> She's really fast. She has the best handshake. She's an Elvis Presley addict. <laughs> She's a dancer. She's deeply kind. And she glows. A star, with an exclamation point. Gabriella's most memorable experiences have school, at school have been the musicals. She says, every musical I did here at Monty was memorable. However, this year's musical is one that I will never forget. I love the opportunity I got this year to perform with a real set and props once again. How would she like to be remembered? As a student who followed her dreams and didn't let anyone tell her who she could or couldn't be. Gabriella Grace Frizz. Frizz family, thank you for giving us this opportunity to do this together. You can head back up. <laughs> we love you, Gab. Congratulations. And best to grace. Thank you. <laughs> and now back to our regularly scheduled program. I want to close my introduction with a brief personal message to my friends in the class of 2023. One of my special opportunities each year is to think about each one of you. As I compose remarks for this event. It's early for this. Uh, this class came into Montgomery Middle School when I arrived at Montgomery School. We were all in a whirlwind of change. Your classes met in the library and in the dining room. And remember, we all lined up on the porch in all weather, even sub-zero, for Chef Ron to serve us lunches, which we would, if we could bear it outside, eat or go into our classrooms. Um, that first year, we couldn't do all of our sports and activities that we all desperately wanted to do. This group had to find new ways to interact and to live into the responsibility that comes with being, suddenly, the older students in this school with lots of little eyes on them. All of you here thrived because of your belief in yourself, but also because you committed to making it work. And together you built a new kind of community. Not only was that a unique path, but you were all uniquely composed as well. The, this class began with three of you in pre-K, but wasn't complete until Liz joined us for eighth grade. Just like today is a ceremony that will never happen again, this class of 27 is a collection of many that became one class of 2023. You went the distance and you'll be remembered here for years to come. All your journeys led you here through amazing times when we look back on them. Amazing times will define your life going forward. But from this moment you leave here on, those journeys will lay along different roads. You'll always be the class of 2023, 20, but you will be finding your own way. We don't know all that's in store for you, but we know you're ready. You know how to question, how to build, how to collaborate, how to give. With those many roads in mind, we, the faculty and I, 
I'm giving you a gift along with your diploma today. Your teachers have each signed a copy of a book called What the Road Said by Cleo Wade. It's a gift to you, both in the spirit of the story and the wishes of your teachers as you embark on your roads. I hope you'll enjoy them and keep them next to your yearbook. For when the roads are less clear, you might want to look inside and know you are loved and you will discern the way. And now, on to today's student address. I have a short introduction for Justin Dell, and then he'll take my place at the podium. Justin came to Montgomery School for the first time as a fifth grader, along with his twin brother, Ryan. Ryan gave a wonderful speech at fifth grade, rising up, moving up ceremony on Wednesday. So in a way, they're both shepherding us out of this year and into the future. Their sister, Abby, is also a graduate of the class of 2021. As you'll hear today, Justin is a positive leader within our community. Justin leads by words and examples. As a member of the student government team, as one of our athletic reps, he values healthy engagement, taking his work seriously and encouraging others to do the same. At the same time, he's kind and attentive to the needs of others, wanting everyone around him to succeed. A high honor student, Justin is a gifted problem solver and a hard worker. Justin's motivation level is high and that inspires friends, classmates, teammates. He often asks the insightful question that opens up learning for those around him. At Montgomery, Justin ran cross country, played basketball and baseball. While leading an undefeated cross country team last fall, he won the independent school meet outright at the challenging Belmont Plateau. This, then he turned around and cheered everyone else as they came in. And that spirit was also on display in our last baseball game of the year when he came in to pitch relief, controlling the opposition somehow to allow a miraculous final inning comeback. He's also an accomplished swimmer outside of school. He likes traveling with his family to do running events when they're not at Disney, or sometimes they run at Disney. It's really amazing. <laughs> Next year, he'll bring his steady focus and sense of fun to Springford High School. His teachers and his classmates will surely value his positive, caring, consistent attitude toward all he undertakes. Please welcome Justin Delp to the stage to share his address. We made it. We finally made it. <laughs> but I don't know if finally is really the right word for it. Sure, we're done. Graduated. No more tests, quizzes, projects, or homework. We've achieved everything we imagined and more. We are done with our time at Monty, but that can honestly be really terrifying, and that's okay. Many of you have gone to this school for what feels like, or in some cases, what literally was, your entire life. You've grown up sitting in almost every seat in Bell Hall, watching the eighth graders present chapel after chapel, waiting for it to finally, finally be your turn. And now it's over. For those like me who came in the later years, we still developed unbreakable bonds with our teachers and with each other. We still found new passions and grew as new challenges presented themselves. When the time of the year comes around for the school to become Greeks versus Romans once again, we all split off into our teams, decided for us, and try our hardest to win like our lives depend on it. And although I may never have won as a Roman since I came here in fifth grade, <laughs> when we all ran down to the creek after the Greeks were announced champions this year and jumped in together, I still felt like a winner. When Mr. Anzaldo jumped into the creek with us and we all surrounded him, I still felt like a winner. And when we all got out to hug our parents and go to the picnic, I still felt like a winner. And I think that experience sums up the values of Montgomery as a whole, making you always feel like you're part of the one big family that we are here. My point is, so many of us have spent so long here that it's terrifying to think that soon we may never be on this campus again. Next fall, when school is back in session, we won't be together anymore, asking each other what class is next or what letter day it is in the group chat. There will be no more late nights studying for what feels like an impossibly difficult children test, and there won't be any more logbook checks with Mr. K. But that's something we need to accept. Moving on to the next chapter of our lives will, sure, be easy for some of us, but it'll also be incredibly difficult for the rest. Even after we leave this school behind, our marks will be cemented for years to come. Everyone in this class has left a mark, however big or however small. 
Whether it's as stupid as staining your sports jersey with red Gatorade after a game, or as amazing as hitting a game-winning shot in front of the whole school at Friday Night Lights. We all present our own chapels after watching so many others. Together, we all made our mark with the Legacy Project, and although it wasn't what we had imagined at first, we were able to adapt to every challenge thrown our way. If I had to associate one trait with this class, I think that would be it, adapting to challenges, and not only dealing with them, but also making the best out of them. Anyone will tell you that middle school is not an easy time of life, but spending the first two months of it online, at home, in the middle of a worldwide pandemic, makes it a bit harder. While we were certainly not the only ones affected, and not affected in the worst of ways, it was still really hard. When we came back in person, we weren't able to see each other's faces, and we weren't able to do any large school gatherings. We weren't able to go on our fun field trips to Washington DC, Florida, or Canada. We experienced things we never would have thought possible. And because of that, we became closer than anyone would have thought possible. This class was amazing. I have so many amazing memories of so many amazing people, and I feel lucky to have had such an amazing class to have spent the past four years of my life with. This class is the embodiment of hard work, resilience, creativity, and determination. We have all shared so many laughs in our snack breaks with Mr. A, or our study halls getting absolutely no work done, that I know I'm not the only one going to miss all of my friends, teachers, and coaches, because you guys really are my family. We are all an amazing, imperfect family, and I'm gonna miss every single one of you. Just imagine all the amazing things we'll do in the future, all of the amazing feats we will accomplish in high school and beyond, all of the changes we will make to the world. Imagine a world where not a single one of us forgets who we are. Imagine a world where we treat each other with kindness and respect. Imagine a world in which we use all the lessons we learned at Monty. I want you to imagine what the future can look like if we always try to be our best selves. And although we may no longer see each other as we do now at Monty, never be afraid to reach out and lend a helping hand. Never forget all the fun memories we made together. And never forget to stay connected, because the family we hear at Monty is truly a special one. So goodbye to all of you parents, students, faculty, and staff for one last time. Thank you, and have an amazing summer. Justin. The Hubby Gresh Award is intended to recognize a member of the Montgomery School community who has demonstrated exemplary dedication to the school through commitment of time, talent, and treasure. Today, I have the honor of presenting the 2023 award to Anthony DeFrancesco, a past parent and former chairman of the Montgomery Board of Trustees. Tony, please stand with Board Chair Maureen Rukin while I read some thoughts on your selection. Tony led the board during the transition from Kevin Conklin to Sally Kaidel, my predecessors as heads of school. He served during their times with great distinction. Over his nine years on the board, he not only attended countless board and committee meetings, but he was also a fixture at almost every campus event. Tony and Jean, his wife, are proud parents of two Montgomery graduates, Emma and Corinne. Tony's successor as board chair, Dan Goldsmith, shared this. Tony is one of the most caring, selfless, and giving individuals, and he embodies the values of Montgomery School in everything he does. For anyone who has had the privilege of spending time with Tony, while well, he is never at a loss for words, <laughs> He has a gentle and subtle way of making his points and compelling people to join in support of Monty. Sally Kaidel wrote to me to say, Tony's a great man who's very deserving of this honor. He's a wonderful storyteller, great at connecting with all kinds of people. He helped me get settled into the head's role, brought strong leadership into the 2015 centennial celebration, and was always willing to help in any way. And Kevin Conklin shared this tidbit to illustrate how much Tony loved and Jean loved Montgomery from the start. 
When the DeFrancescos enrolled at Montgomery, they lived in Delaware. Tony worked in Phoenixville and dropped Emma and Corinne off at preschool and kindergarten. They were building a house, and it took a couple of years to finish it. He's a good and loyal friend and thought partner. Well, that is a commute to Monty that I can certainly relate to and respect. <laughs> For my own part, I've had great opportunities to meet you, Tony, over my three years, including our iconic trip to Exton Bistro Diner, which I understand was the head spot with Kevin, where you would try to convince him to eat Scrapple. <laughs> Sadly, on that day, you were outnumbered by the Bostonians two to one. Uh, we thrive today thanks to the blueprint and belief you helped to impart. I'm pleased to stand with the current board in presenting you this 2023 Hubby Gresh Award for all your investment and love of Montgomery School. Storyteller, long-winded, yes, all that. I have to say that I'm inspired to do, as all the board members, faculty, admin team, everybody, you're inspired by this, you know, by the successes of these guys as they move on. Looking forward to seeing what you guys do as you move forward. Knock them dead as you go forward. I appreciate that. Um, the foundations you got here are what are, what are gonna build uh, your lives, your, your high school careers, your college careers, so just appreciate the foundation you got here. You were taught by some of the best faculty there, there exists. So uh, the, the farmhouse folks that I've worked with over the years, the admin team, whether it's Kevin, Sally, Tom, uh, have been incredible, but the farmhouse works for the schoolhouse, so it's all about the program. The board members I've met have been incredible over the years. Building, being a buildings and grounds guy, when a lot of these buildings were little sketches, uh, you know, uh, my buildings and grounds posse, including Carolyn Blair, so the dream team, you know, <laughs> uh, it, you know, has produced uh, a lot of things here. So, uh, thank you. I'm honored to get the award. I'm happy to have the support of my my family, Jean, Emma, and Corinne. Emma's from 08, and Corinne's from 11, and uh, uh, happy to see you move on. But a story, I have to share a story, and it and it isn't and it isn't my story, and I don't think a lot of people here might know the story. But on campus here, there's a concrete planter somewhere, there's two of them, that lived on the old campus down in Wynwood. And when they were on the campus down in Wynwood, uh, they were vandalized, they were smashed apart. And Bennett Hill and a couple of folks, the students down there, meticulously glued and cemented that planter back together. So as, we, as our graduation speaker talked about cementing and the pieces of the body of the students that you guys are, remember that you are the pieces that are cemented together as you move forward. Bennett Hill told me that story one time and it's lost in the lore. But uh, I just wanted to share that story that Bennett Hill told me and, uh, and let the rest of you folks know that that's the legacy of the school, the community here, and, uh, and I look forward to you guys doing whatever you guys do next. So thanks again. Uh, had the pleasure of meeting some great folks here and some hardworking people, and I hope everybody continues to do that. Thanks again. Well, as long as Tony's changing the program, I'll change the program too. <laughs> and just give a little introduction to Heather. Each year, we welcome back an alumnus to speak to the graduates and share words of wisdom. And it's our practice to have a former teacher introduce the speaker. Heather Shellhorn has taught at Montgomery since 1993. I'll let you do the math. And we'll take today's introduction in her hands. Heather is a leader on campus many times over. She leads seventh and eighth grade history, is the department chair for history across the school and an eighth grade advisor and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Heather is a mentor and friend to countless students and current and former colleagues across the country. It's my pleasure to welcome Heather 
to give this dedication. When I was first asked to say a few words this morning to introduce Liam Brassington, our alumni speaker from the class of 2015, I knew that I would need to employ my skills as, as a trusty and reliable historian. That is, I would need to dig into the past a little, consult some primary sources, draw some conclusions, and do some detective work in the present to learn what Liam has been up to since he graduated from Montgomery. In laying the groundwork, I'll begin in the not-so-distant past. When Liam joined us in second grade, he became the first of four Brassington brothers slash cousins to attend Montgomery. He set the bar high and began a legacy for his family that we here at Montgomery have cherished throughout the years. Serious, mature, and studious, but with, uh, nevertheless with a hint of mischief and a perpetual twinkle in his eye, Liam has been the consummate scholar-athlete. He often had his job cut out for him as he played the ever-present conscience to an animated and spirited band of merry men from the class of 2015. <laughs> but not always, as there was that gentle sprinkling of mischief that I mentioned. Liam, however, was unique. He had an uncanny ability to know when I was about to lose it, <laughs> to give the look to the class, or perhaps give a signature warning that begins with, OK, folks, here's the deal. <laughs> But by that time, Liam had long since reestablished a sense of personal decorum and gotten back to work well before his friends and classmates caught on, thereby setting the tone for the others while also avoiding any individual consequences. As for my primary sources, Mrs. Malzett described Liam as the CEO of middle school. <laughs> Ms. Nauer echoed a similar sentiment when she noted that Liam was, in so many respects, the perfect eighth grade grown-up while still having that playful side. One that, for instance, enjoyed dressing like a pumpkin pie for Halloween, orange shirt, hat, pie symbol in the front. And she went on to share that Liam provided much needed reliable insider intel on the Montgomery way to help her settle in during her first year here. While in my class, Liam's interests were varied and he explored and reported on the International Space Station, represented Egyptian interests in the role of ambassador during our classroom model UN, and portrayed philanthropist Andrew Carnegie in our Captains of Industry boardroom project. Ultimately, Liam completely immersed himself in the life of this school, serving as student government president, captain of numerous teams, and as the recipient of the athletic award and the middle school cup as the greatest influence for good at graduation. As a person who embodies integrity and our esteemed values of veritas, pietas, and caritas, Liam was born for leadership, and he has never wavered from this. In fact, in the winter of 2015, Liam was featured on the cover of The Bell, a past Montgomery publication under the title Inspiring Leadership. Oh, look what I found. <laughs> little primary source stuff here right now. Thank you, Ms. Kirkner, for that, coming from the file with that. I am not at all surprised, I know, forgive me? Okay. I am not at all surprised to learn of his many successes since graduating from Montgomery eight years ago. Beginning with his time at the Perky Yeoman School where he received numerous awards through, throughout his years there that honored his academic excellence, character, and positive spirit. He continued to captain multiple uh, athletic teams while at Perk and was recognized as a two-time honorable mention for the all-area boys lacrosse team. Ultimately, after being elected to deliver the school's baccalaureate address, Liam would graduate from Perk in 2019 with honors within the Entrepreneurial Institute. From there, he went on to study at Villanova University, where he continued to serve his community in many capacities, one of which was through his position on the executive board of the Management Information Systems Society, which enables the public to understand technology's role in business and the corporate world. Liam is a, is a recent 2023 Villanova graduate with a bachelor's degree in business administration with majors in finance and management information systems. And now Liam will take his skills, talents, 
intellect, and passion into his next venture at the University of Pennsylvania, where he will pursue a Master of Computer and Information Technology while also beginning a position this fall in consulting at Ernst & Young and working in their strategy and transactions group in M&A Consulting. And I have to tell you, that is way over my head. But <laughs> <laughs> and I worked hard to get that out. Um, but I'm very impressed. I have only begun to scratch the surface as there is so much more to share about Liam. But ideally, you have the essence of who Liam is and the gift he has been to the Montgomery community and beyond. Suffice it to say, you have made us so very proud, Liam, and will continue to do so. And now we welcome you home to Montgomery with warmth and affection as you share your wisdom and your memories of your own with the class of 2023. Please join me in welcoming Liam Brassington. Oh my goodness, Mrs. Shawhorn, thank you so much. Um, graduates, when you begin high school history classes, you will all be very thankful for all of the work Mrs. Shawhorn made you do, because uh, history will be such a breeze. <clears throat> Grad uh, I want to thank Mr. McManus for his support and for the privilege of speaking with you all today. I'm so excited to be back at Montgomery for the commencement and celebration of the class of 2023. I'm a graduate of the class of 2015 and began at Montgomery when I was in second grade. I cannot help but feel a little nostalgia as my friends and I once sat in those same chairs filled with the excitement and trepidation that days like today bring. My friends and I were wearing our ties, the same ties that we probably found in Lost and Found in the morning of graduation. <laughs> I'm sure someone today was probably running late or someone needed their Starbucks and I'll even bet one of you are wearing a blazer that is not yours. <laughs> if any of these sound like you, then I think we might have found a connection. I remember looking out at the audience and seeing so many familiar faces. Some of those same faces are here today. I cannot tell you everything that was said when we graduated, but I remember waiting to hear our names being called and wondering what kind remarks would be made about each of us. And I remember a lot of joy. <clears throat> you all have worked hard achieved much, and have a great deal to be proud of. You've reached the end of a journey and are set to embark on a new adventure. However, before you go, I wanted to share a few thoughts that might help you as you begin a new chapter. Trying to capture the experience at Montgomery is difficult. I'm sure you can each recall vivid memories, important lessons, and plenty of in-between times that had an impact on you. Yet to me, and maybe to you, Montgomery is not defined by any one day or class or person. I was very fortunate to attend Montgomery alongside my brother and my two cousins. We all are somewhat close in age, we have similar names, and we all look alike. This wreaked havoc on the poor teachers who had to deal with another boy with the last name Brassington each and every year. Rumor has it that a school administrator kept an index card in their pocket, and written on it was a mini family tree that explained how all of us Brassingtons were related. <laughs> I love being able to walk around campus to lunch and recess or chapel and see my family. I like that I would see my aunt sitting in the back of Friday chapel or our parents after practice and at games. It was really special to have family together for such an important part of our lives. Yet, family is not just about your last names or your siblings. Because at Montgomery, the word family takes on a particular meaning. At Montgomery, family is how we treat one another and the values that we uphold. Words like veritas, pietas, and caritas are hallmarks that bring our family together. Family is formed on class trips, on the soccer field, and in the art room. Family is found when you give your eighth grade chapels, or when you rehearse for choir or the fifth grade play. You might not have realized it, but even when you were playing at recess or joking around in the dining hall, you were growing as a family then too. I have all sorts of memories about the ways I formed family. I remember going on advisory walks with our advisor, Mrs. Simpson, or when she gifted everyone in our advisory live goldfish. <laughs> I formed family with my friend, Joe Sejubari, when we carpooled from Collegeville pretty much every day of middle school, spending the ride, rehashing the day's jokes, and complaining about homework. I bonded with Nick Cavalieri, 
arguably the funniest in our class, who I would do anything to try and earn a laugh from. I grew close with Will Crist and his humor and sarcasm and his love for technology. Georgia Dom became a confidant, offering me all sorts of advice over the years. I remember forming family with my teammates, sitting with my friends in the back of the lacrosse or soccer bus, and, well, those are stories for another day. <laughs> Families face challenges together and grow together. The class of 2023, this family is no different. And I hope that reaching this point in your education, I hope that you can look around at your classmates and the people in this room and know that you can count on your family. This includes your parents, your grandparents, and families who have supported you along the way, and most definitely the teachers and staff who have been cheering you on, doing the hard work of trying to bring out the very best in each of you. People like Mrs. Dadalo, Mrs. Batson, Ms. Malzette, Mrs. Blair, and Mrs. Murata had outsized impacts on my experience. I'm sure if you look in the audience, you can tell that this day is just as exciting and emotional for them as it might be for you. Since graduating in 2015, I've leaned on my Montgomery family at different moments, counting on my friends for support. And I'll let you know that you won't be able to connect as easily as you do now, because unfortunately, your Montgomery family will not be in all of your classes or in the hallway anymore. It takes effort in being intentional to keep your Montgomery family together. I have found that in a FaceTime call, a text, or even sending a meme, there are all sorts of ways to keep the connections and maintain the bonds you have made here. When you reconnect, even, it's ap even if it is after a few years, you will be so surprised how you all are swapping stories and laughing about things that happened when you were only eight years old. And while you all may be going in different directions, you can count on Montgomery to be waiting for you whenever you wish to return. While I prepared to address you all, I decided to watch some of the recordings of your eighth grade chapels. I even went back and watched my own chapel. Well, as much as I could watch of my 14-year-old self. But. <laughs> In my chapel, I talked about falling down and getting back up, sharing my lessons and what was important when facing adversity. I felt so nervous, but was very happy once I had finished. Delivering my chapel gave me confidence and would be an important part of how I viewed public speaking in high school and even in college. What has stuck with me is how vital that first attempt, that first step in the journey can be. Those of us lucky enough to graduate from Montgomery can aim high, thanks to taking those first steps here. While watching some of your chapels, I have been so thoroughly impressed with the messages and the stories that you chose to share. It comes so naturally to us here at Montgomery, but it is truly an extraordinary thing to be able to take time and reflect on deeper meaning and the learnings that you each offered when you delivered your chapel. Some of you might love public speaking, and some of you might have preferred doing anything but talking in front of a big audience. It might not have been the easiest thing in the world, but something I can tell you is that it holds tremendous value, and you should all feel proud of having completed this feat. So the next time, and there will be a next time, you will have the experience to continue sharing your ideas and letting people hear your voice. You all are graduating from Montgomery after a few chaotic and turbulent years. You all know how quickly our world is changing. Lots of new technology and lots of new challenges are demanding our very best. And after listening to your chapels, I was left with an important conclusion that I hope you already know. You are ready for the next step. You are ready for the future. That's not to say that you'll have all the answers or will win every game or ace every test. What it does mean is that you have the right tools, the right experiences, and know where to find the right answers. It might not be obvious, but all of the experiences here at Montgomery have offered up useful insights that will help you as you begin this next chapter. Believe it or not, Greek and Roman games, doing science experiments in the Greek, and even having kindergarten buddies are all important in shaping the type of people you are now and will continue to become. Because at Greek and Roman games, you learn the importance of teamwork, loyalty, and the spirit of competition. When you were doing science experiments in the creek, you were getting messy and stepping outside of the box in the pursuit of knowledge. And when you were an older buddy, you gained an appreciation on how to be a good role model. As the years pass, and you continue to grow and make all of us at Montgomery proud, I know you will be reminded of these experiences and how instructive they were. So when you are faced with a challenge, I want you to know that you can take a step back and know that you are capable of meeting the moment and giving it your best. High school will bring new challenges and will test you in new ways. You will have to make new friends, try and connect with teachers and coaches, and take all sorts of classes. 
This can be a little disorienting. I know it was for me. In my first few weeks at Perky Omen School, I went from freshman orientation to starting varsity on the soccer team, not to mention trying to adjust to academic life. You will be able to do these things. And here's the big secret. You will actually do these things better than the other students. Because Montgomery prepared you for moments like these. You will be able to seize new, op seize new opportunities and become the best version of you. All of this leads me to say this. I have faith in this group, the class of 2023. You are smart and funny and passionate people who have the capacity to realize the highest of ambitions. You've done a lot of hard work and grown so much and experienced a great amount, all of which brought you here to this moment. I know how days like today can bring with it all sorts of different emotions. It's okay to feel happy and a little sad at the same time. But you've got a new chapter to write, and I'm so excited to see what you choose to do with the learnings and progress you've made during your time at Montgomery. Thank you so much, and congratulations to the class of 2023. Have you sat long enough? <laughs> How you guys doing? All right. Believe it or not, the day is still about you. A lot of people gathered to share a lot of important things. One more special introduction for you will come from your head of middle school, Mr. B. Liam, that was awesome. And also, a lot of my messages were in your speech. <laughs> so this is a special moment for me, because this is my first year at Monty, and if you don't know me, I'm Alan Vandegrift, head of middle school. When I think of this class, three words come to mind. Resilient, connected, and talented. Just as, we, as we've heard today, this is an amazing group of students who love being together. Just like at the end of the dinner dance, where I hear you locked arms and dance in a circle to the last song. A class who was heavily affected by COVID came out of that, finished strong, and barely missed the beat. Resilient. Talented beyond talented, a class full of performer, performers, artists, academics, and musicians. I could go on and on, but we've already heard a lot about you. And I believe your lives have spoken for themselves throughout your time here at Monty. As I reflect back to the beginning of my time at Monty last spring, I'll never forget this. I remember being in the golf cart with Mrs. Silla and Max. And Max was talking about all the stories from Montgomery, his past stories from his siblings, and thinking, his knowledge and passion for Monty is incredible. I remember being in the student sessions with Ryan talking about student leadership, with Hayden asking me questions like, who's better, LeBron or Jordan? To which I answered, Allen Iverson. <laughs> or Brady talking about how fun, but bad, the baseball team was. <laughs> and thinking, these are the students that I would like to spend my time with. I remember thinking, in the fall, how am I going to write 20 second secondary school recommendations for students that I barely even know? That mindset quickly changed as I intentionally started spending time with them and found myself wanting to spend more and more time with this class. They gave me energy as an educator. That angst, again, left me because their personalities quickly jumped out as the year progressed. And those recommenda recommendation letters became a joy to write. I often say that school years go by the leaders of the school, meaning eighth graders. This eighth grade took us to heights that I could barely imagine. They had a huge impact on every corner of the school that they touched, and it was felt by many. I know this firsthand that Montgomery has taught this class many lessons and values that will continue to stay with them as they move on from us. Recently, their classmate Gabriella, Gabriella reflected on the following. She said, last but not certainly least, kindness, I will say it a hundred times, 
if I have to. Kindness, empathy, hope, and forgiveness, they are all ginormous aspects of what make us better people. So please be careful, be kind, have empathy towards others, and most importantly, forgive. This class did just that with each other and their leadership as eighth graders and to the wider community. They aren't perfect. Everything did not go as planned, but they were resilient and that showed throughout how connected they were with the community and each other. Just like Liam stated, with change comes many emotions. And their classmate Emma stated the following. I'm feeling lots of emotions right now. I'm scared. I'm excited, annoyed, relieved, worried. But most of all, I am grateful. I am ready. My whole life is about to change. It is about to be flipped upside down and shaken like a snow globe. But Montgomery has prepared me for change, to be shaken up a bit. I am prepared to leave here to continue to grow as a person and a student. I am prepared because I know whenever I need it, Monty will be right here, waiting for me to come home. These emotions are okay, and you should, fe you should face them and tackle them head on. Emma is right. You are prepared for these emotions and for what lies ahead. You proved it time and time again. A growth mindset quote to end, because I know this class did so well with the lunchroom quotes this year, from LeBron James. Try it, fail, and try it again. None of this can't stuff. Try it over and over, because when you say you can't, you train your mind that you will carry on with you. Light bulb moments, aha moments, will come in the next year. It's like Asher, my two-year-old, when he climbs up the jungle gym. Sometimes he shakes, sometimes he cries. He is hesitant, but we go back and do it again and again. The look on his face when he gets so that light bulb moment is priceless. And whether you were two and a half in your freshman year, senior year, or beyond, pushing yourself with that mindset will allow you to accomplish your goals. I know this about this class because I've seen it from all of you. Remember that that light bulb moment is right around the corner. Remember to carry these Monty values and lessons forward and to continue to share your stories and passions with others. In closing, I challenge this class to stay connected with each other as you move on from Monty. Thank you for a beautiful, wonderful year. Our same thanks goes to you, Mr. V. A wonderful year. All right. Let's do this thing. Once again, I'll ask the chair of the board, Maureen Rukin, and Mr. V to come be ready to receive the graduates. Are ready? Okay. Jack Ballow. Jack came to Montgomery in second grade. His classmates describe him as athletic, outgoing and smart, driven, hardworking, never afraid to stand up for himself or others, not afraid either to be the class clown. <laughs> Best friends, my brother, a fashion icon, <laughs> one of my best friends since third grade, always makes me laugh, brave, a leader, one of the eighth grade leaders who helps make it such a good class. Jack thinks the Creek Classroom is one of the best things that's happened, new in his time here, and he's been here a while. He calls it an amazing way to learn outside. When asked what advice he'd give to seventh graders, he said, if you want something you've never had, you'll have to do something you never did. Jackson Anthony Bala.
Hayden Blair. Hayden is one of our lifers. She joined the school in pre-K. Her classmates describe her like this. Trustworthy, doesn't back down or give up, always gives her best. She likes to spray water on me, but she's nice. <laughs> always makes my day with her charming personality. Good at math and caring toward others. MVP, queen. Bestie, has the silkiest curls. Great to talk to. Confident leader. True to herself. Hayden's most memorable moment was one a lot of us shared. She said, this basketball season was the most memorable. Basketball always is memorable because we always have a good time, but winning against West Town and hearing the whole school cheering was the most memorable of all. What advice would she give to seventh graders? Do not drown yourself in work, but remember to make memories as well, because your eighth grade year goes by fast. Hayden Gail Blair. Dylan Bond. Dylan came to Montgomery in fourth grade. His friends call him smart, kind-hearted, makes anyone around him laugh and feel better. Great public speaking. Brings a fun atmosphere to the classroom. A person of good character, kind to his friends, and humble. A certified fiddler. I only write them down. I don't know. <laughs> good friend. Cool, silly. A talented voice actor. Looks out for others. A genuine good person. When asked what teachers have inspired him, Dylan said, Mr. Hambrick inspired me to start going to the gym and taught me many things on how to get started. Dylan would give the following advice to seventh graders. Be honest and nothing bad will happen. Also, do your work. <laughs> Dylan Parker Bond. Emma Collingwood. Emma has been a part of the Montgomery community since third grade. Emma's friends say that Emma is shy, but not. <laughs> a friend I will never forget. Brave, intelligent, inspiring, says what's meaningful. Went over the top in the musical. A big reader. Sweet, calm, and chill. An anime nerd. Cool hair. Always exceeding even personal expectations. Helpful, accepting. A wonderful person who is loyal, kind, and trustworthy. When asked about a memorable experience, Emma said, the musical this year. Beauty and the Beast. I've been doing theater performances since second grade, but I've never had a solo singing role before this year. I took a leap out of my comfort zone, and I had so much fun doing it. Upon reflection, here are some of the ways Emma has grown at Montgomery. When I first came here, I tried to be like everyone else, though I realized that to find people who you want to be close with and be friends with, I had to be myself and real friends will find me. Emma Therese Collingwood. <laughs> Jack Dale.
Jack came to Montgomery in fourth grade. Classmates say Jack is very funny, goofy, and can make everyone laugh. Dedicated to his friends and his school. Quiet and unique. Has the best backpack. <laughs> Produces egg art. <laughs> Knows all US naval ships. Was the best LaFou in the musical. Kind, good at geography. Wise, open, focused. In a word, unique. When Jack asked which, was asked which teachers at Monty inspired him, he wrote, in all caps, all of them. <laughs> they have all helped me grow as a person and all deserve credit. When thinking about how he, how he has changed and grown in his time here, Jack said, I've become social. When I came to Montgomery, I barely talked with anyone outside my family. Jack Turner Dale. <laughs> Justin Delp. Justin came to Montgomery in fifth grade. His classmates say, a great twin. <laughs> At a very specific source. <laughs> kind, respectful, mature. Can lift you up on a bad day. Passionate and hardworking, true leader. Great runner. He does cool things, but never talks about it. Best throwing partner, insanely good at every sport. Shark boy. Lanky, smart, genuine. Should be everyone's role model. Kind, determined. Justin shared the following as his most memorable experience. Going undefeated in cross country for the first time because we as a team had been working hard all season and it really paid off. When asked how he'd like to be remembered, Justin said, as a kind and considerate leader. Justin William Delp. <laughs> Ryan Delp. Ryan came to Montgomery in fifth grade also. His classmates say he is my brother. <laughs> Always looks on the positive side of things. That was also your brother. Funny. Best perm, curly hair. His energy is contagious. Leader. We'll do anything for two dollars. <laughs> My debate buddy, and we both know we're the best. Trustworthy, great friend. My Roman captain partner. An overall kind person who is really funny and very conversational. When asked about his most memorable experience, Ryan said, being in Friday Night Lights. It's the biggest sport game of the year, and I was starting. How would Ryan like to be remembered at Montgomery? As someone who cared about those around him. Ryan Lawrence Delp. <laughs> Reese Escobar. Reese came to Montgomery to start middle school in sixth grade. Her friends call her the nicest person, always there when you need her. Leader, true friend, funny and dependable. Athletic, kind, silly Reese. Trustworthy, genuine, smart. Mrs. Potts. She said she was moving to Colorado on April 1st and I fell for it. 
Reese's Pieces. Great at soccer. Fun to talk to. Cool, chill. Will do anything for the people she loves. Reese says the Da Vinci Project for Social Studies in seventh grade was her most memorable academic experience. She and her friend directly replicated Da Vinci's crossbow, and it looked cool, but it didn't work. <laughs> Reflecting on the best changes she's seen at Montgomery, Reese said, I've seen many friendship changes, and I think it's great how different people come together to find where they belong. Reese Ann Escobar. Josh Fenner. Josh has been at Montgomery for nine years since kindergarten. His friends say he is great with computers. Insanely smart, I really don't understand what he's saying because he's too smart. <laughs> Discord moderator, Minecraft master. Dependable, passionate. Math man, always helps when you need it. Cares for his friends. World War I guy. <laughs> Cubic cuber. Determined helper. One of the kindest kids you'll ever meet. When asked which teachers inspired him at Montgomery, Josh said, Mr. Anzaldo inspired me to pursue math and is an amazing teacher. Mrs. Frizz and Mrs. Baumeister also influenced me to be better at spelling and helping others. When considering the best way things have changed for him over the years at Montgomery, he said, I love how the staff and faculty have changed from being my teachers to being my friends. I also love to see the new kids go into my favorite teachers' classes. Joshua William Fenner. Perry Gilbert. Perry's diploma will be presented by his father, board member, Paul Gilbert. Perry also came to Montgomery in kindergarten. Perry's friends say, smart, hardworking, health nut. Helps around school, whether it be tech or anything. I became his friend by sitting next to, down next to him in kindergarten and asking him if he wanted to be my friend. <laughs> Can learn any instrument in five minutes. Good at bass and guitar. Funny. Addicted to Herman Lee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Computer whiz. 3D printer. Interesting, cool, chill inventor. Easy to talk to. If you want someone to talk to, go to him. Perry's most memorable academic experience was BattleBots in seventh grade. I designed my bot every day to make it the best. How would he like to be remembered? The kid who did the tech director's job for two months. <laughs> Perry Jackson Gilbert. Brady Herzog. Brady also came to Montgomery in kindergarten. His friends say he's fun to hang out with and kind. That he likes broccoli. <laughs> Great debater. A good friend, hardworking. Tall. Gentle giant, my Irish lad. <laughs> <laughs> Loves baseball. Are you funny guy? Some of these are judgment calls, you guys. <laughs> Walmart version of Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs> Ed 
good at airplane tycoon, loves talking sports, good person to know, even though we make fun of each other, he's a really good person. A leader, helps the school. If anyone needs help, he is willing. Brady had two most memorable experiences over his years here. The first was the Centennial Party in 2015, and then the Boston trip this year. His message to younger students is short and sweet. Don't give up, no matter what. Brady Stephen Herzog. <laughs> Elise Hornsey. Elise's diploma will be presented by her father, Will Hornsey, board member and class of 83 alumni. Elise came to Monty in third grade. Her friends call her very funny and nice. Shoe geek, dapper. Elise always makes me laugh on bad days, and it's fun to talk to in general. She's a good Cogsworth. In parentheses, it says Logsworth. I don't know if that clarifies who said it. Roman Captain plays Roblox and Oculus with me. Caring. Obsessed with the Starniolo triplets. It's concerning. <laughs> Funniest laugh. <laughs> cool to be around. Kind. Always there for you. When asked what teachers inspired her here at Montgomery, Elise mentioned Mrs. Bala. She said, Mrs. Bala has helped me and cared for me ever since I was first joined here in third grade. Her advice to seventh graders, be nice to everyone, be the leaders of the school next year, and keep in touch with your friends. Elise Marie Hornsey. <laughs> Kaden Jacobs. Caden has been at Montgomery since fifth grade. Classmates say Caden is amazing at video games. A pencil and calculator borrower in math. <laughs> Always moving, fun to talk to, very good at anything athletic. Tries at everything, competitive, never gives up. Super fast. Kind, humble, into Nike sweatshirts. <laughs> cool, calm, responsible. A trustworthy friend who is kind and quietly does the right thing when no one is watching. Reflecting on his most memorable academic experience, Caden said, Lego Robotics in sixth grade. It was a fun project and I learned a lot about coding. How has Caden grown and changed most while at Montgomery? He says, concentration. The school has taught me how to be focused and in a fun way, helping me for the future. Caden Carmelo Jacobs. <laughs> Jack Keegan. Jack joined Montgomery in fourth grade. His classmates consider him outgoing and fun to be around, food enthusiast, passionate, hardworking, good at math, three math bowl appearances, best at Fortnite, loves talking sports. Too much hair? I don't think so. <laughs> Silly man. Kicker, cool, active, always brings a laugh to math class while still being smart. Keeps going no matter what. 
Jack feels he has grown and changed over his time here. He says, I've become more responsible, learning how to focus better and be a better student. His advice for seventh graders would be, just take this last year in. It was the best year ever, and we've had tons of fun. Balance schoolwork with fun, though. John Charles Keegan. Sydney Lamb. Sydney is another lifer, having come to Montgomery in pre-K. Her friends say, kind, true friend, passionate, funny, always listens. Amazing at soccer. Always gives me pencils. Greek captain, one of my best friends. Future Alex Morgan. So excited to be sisters. Helpful, athletic, kind, leader. Good at art, responsible. Love her. She never fails to make my day better. Sydney also mentioned two most memorable Monty experiences from her many years here. She said, the Boston trip this year, because it was our first overnight trip and really fun, and the centennial year surprise party in first grade. How would Sydney like to be remembered? Greek captain, a lifer, and a role model to others. Sydney Catherine Lamb. <laughs> Brock Larkin. Brock came to Montgomery to start middle school in sixth grade. His friends call him sporty, looks like a surfer, <laughs> reserved but easy to talk to, graffiti artist, <laughs> chess player, a good friend, secretly funny, quiet, nice, good at catching, Beast at hockey, long hair, <laughs> always wears a hat. Cool, independent, confident, lights up the room with his kindness to everyone around him. Brock has an emphatic and strong enduring memory from Montgomery. He said, when the Romans won the eighth grade tug of war, How would Brock like to be remembered? That one cool kid with long hair. <laughs> Brock Walter Larkin. <laughs> Carter Lundmark. Carter is our third lifer starting at Montgomery in pre-K. His classmates say he always has gum. <laughs> My best friend since first grade. Lots of hair, they like hair. It's changed a little bit, probably since they wrote this. Uh, very competitive. I'm gonna see him on the ice when I watch the NHL. Leader, brave. Big heart and a lot of energy. Outgoing, good friend, hardworking. Always there for you. Hilarious. Crescendo buddy. Always brings up how we fake slept to Miss Art in pre-K. <laughs> Fun to be around and makes people laugh. Carter reached into his memory for his favorite academic experience at Montgomery. He said, it was the Habitat Project with Mrs. Dadalo. It was really cool and was the most fun project I've ever had. 
His advice to younger students is, don't stress about stuff too hard. Because in the end, it doesn't matter as much as you think. Carter Robert Lundmark. <laughs> Caroline Moore. Caroline came to Montgomery in third grade. Her classmates say, love her OMG. I can't even breathe around her because I'm laughing. Kind, funny, feisty. Reminds me of a tree. <laughs> They're poets. <laughs> Athletic, joyful, a helper. Great actor, chill swimmer. Caring, always teaches me dances. Cool, goofy, and smart. Passionate, won't hesitate to defend a friend. Caroline's most memorable experiences were both years ago. She said, my two most memorable experiences were both in third grade, when I won a pinata on my visit day, <laughs> and my first Greek and Roman games, when I won stealing the bacon for the Greeks. <laughs> Caroline's advice to seventh graders, make lists, have fun, be awesome. Caroline Ann Moore. <laughs> Max Rose. Max came to Montgomery in first grade. Max's friend said, always had waffles and fruit in his bag. Handsome, always wears a tie. Horrible at water fights. Talented, fun, helpful. Guitar prodigy. Great chef. You can talk to him whenever you need to. One of the people who helped the eighth grade class work. Loves Old Bay, Lego, magic. Areas. Creative, humble, true to himself. Many teachers inspired Max at Montgomery. He wrote, Mr. Ormsby and Mr. Smith, by, vote, by motivating me to try harder at music. Mrs. Knaus and Mrs. Batson for always helping me in my classes. Mrs. Narog for helping me manage my time. When asked about his most memorable experience at Monty, he said, my chapel, because it made me very proud of myself and it also showed me that you can do anything you set your mind to. Maxime Gorelick Rose. <laughs> Izzy Ruggieri. Izzy came to Montgomery in sixth grade to start in the middle school. Her friend said, our handshake is the bomb. Very nice, cross country master, hardworking. She always tries her best, carefree, good friend, loves Tom Holland. Snazzy, loves bracelets. Loyal, energetic. Cool, funny. Sweet person to be around. There when it counts the most. Izzy's most memorable academic experiences have been in Mrs. Shellhorn's class. She said, even when you don't agree with your side, the debate always pushes you to think outside of your comfort zone. Izzy has some clear aspects of herself she'd want others to remember about her time at Monty. As a loyal, great friend who made good memories and had fun. 
Isabella Grace Ruggieri. Liz Schaefer. Liz came to us this year for eighth grade. Her classmates say she always has colorful shorts. <laughs> Best at hockey, a good teammate. My tutor, long lashes. Funny, brave and clever. Caring, thoughtful, and positive friend. Good at mathematics. Great at softball. Always makes me laugh. Sweet, passionate, doesn't back down. Adapts well to any new environment. Liz shared the following memory, which will stick with her. When Simone was doing my eye black for a game and covered my eyebrows so my eyebrows were black for the rest of the day. Her advice to seventh graders, do not procrastinate. Start working, studying ahead of time, and don't wait until the last moment to do something. Elizabeth Marie Schaefer. Chase Chandler. Chase came to Montgomery in first grade. His classmates say, when I say Chase is so funny, I mean it. Never fails to make someone laugh and makes me physically cry. Calm, yummy. <laughs> Dapper person, if I say so. Certified Hooper. I remember helping him make an acrostic poem in first grade. Monty Splash Brother, basket buddy for life. Braun Braun, glorious king, sugar plum. <laughs> Hardworking, passionate, true to himself. When asked which teacher inspired him the most, Chase responded, Mr. Anzaldo, he helps me be myself. His favorite memory, buzzer beater. <laughs> His advice to seventh grade, make it a fun last year. Chase Michael Chandler. Chloe Samoz. Chloe has been with us for nine years, having joined the school also in kindergarten. Her classmates say, great Boston roommate, nice, friendly, with a rolly backpack. Artistic, leader, determined, good at math, kind, responsible, sweet, Great at Minecraft, easy to talk to, considerate. Likes rabbits, in real life and in art. A quiet, yet strong person. Reflecting on how she's grown and changed in her time here, Chloe says, I've grown up here, and I've been here my entire life. I have made friends and improved in my academics, like art and math. What are the best changes she's seen at Montgomery School in her time here? Everyone in this grade bonding and being friends. Chloe Isabella Samoz. <laughs> Jason Smith. Jason came to Montgomery in fifth grade. His classmates say he's fun to be around, good to talk to, 
Sort of quiet, but really funny and kind, if you listen. Participates in class, always has something to say. Always brings the energy. Fast runner. Jokester, hilarious. Strong, high vertical. Always knows what to say. Comfortable on stage. My boy, bus pal. Tough, loving a good friend, hardworking, doesn't give up. Jason shared his most memorable non-academic experience. Our Boston field trip was very memorable because it was my first multi-night school trip and all the places we went were really fun. Jason would tell seventh graders, quote, eighth grade is more fun, but also more hard. So study hard and you will have fun. <laughs> Jason Thomas Smith. <laughs> Kiefer Williams. Kiefer came to Montgomery at the beginning of middle school in sixth grade. His classmates say, caring for his friends. Luscious locks. <laughs> Amazing and incredible. Funny. Drummer. Very good at math. Good to be around. Seagull. Puts in 100% effort. Very good comedian. Quiet, smart, and nice. Good at tech. Kind man. Distinguished gentleman. Kiefer shared a few of his teachers who've inspired him. Mrs. Malzett, Mrs. Shellhorn, and Mr. Anzaldo, they all inspired me to love the subjects they teach. His most memorable non-academic experience, he says, eighth grade Greek and Roman games, because I was able to lead the lower school kids and got to have fun with every grade. Kiefer John Williams. Simone Willis, last but never least. Simone joined us last year in seventh grade. Her classmates say she stays true to herself, loves carrots, passionate, driven, slay queen, skilled at debate and will debate anything, loud, in the best way, talkative. Not scared to put herself out there. Always knows the tea, outspoken. Funny, caring, she's mom. Would die in the Hunger Games first. <laughs> or any horror movie, apparently, from the list. Lively, extroverted, always cheers me up one of the best people I know. Simone's most memorable experience was a recent one. Greek and Roman games and jumping in the creek because we were all involved and together during this time. When asked about the best changes she's seen in her time here, Simone answered, the best changes have been seeing the people at this school change and grow for the better. Simone Catherine Willis. final presentation of this class, but I want to let you know what's going to happen. They are going to process down, then we will have the faculty process after them. They'll go on to the, uh, the porch out here. The graduates will line up. The faculty can say some words to them. Uh, then we'll have the trustees follow them, and then families, please come and say hello to the graduates. Would the graduates please stand? Ms. Rukin, Board of Trustees, 
with the power vested in me by you. I am very pleased to present to you the graduates of the class of 2023. Flag bearers retrieve our colors. <laughs> 